Hello, and welcome to the Biodiesel Magazine podcast. I am your host, Anna Simmet, and today I have Darren Fuller, Senior Vice President of Sales and Business Development at Alder Fuels. Um, I have actually met Darren in person before as I moderated a panel he was on at the Exporting Pellets Conference in early October. So Darren, it's nice to be chatting again. Welcome to the podcast and thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure being here and uh, really enjoyed our, our time at the pellet conference and looking forward to continuing uh, to educate folks and uh, about what uh, all we're doing at Alder. Yeah, I'm very excited for our chat today. So, um, you know, on that note, why don't we begin, Darren, having you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and you have a background in aviation and kind of how that experience aligned with all fuels. Sure. Well, uh, you know, I've got a, a long uh, background in aviation, um, starting with the family business and, and getting my pilot's license uh, many years ago, 20 something years ago, with, and uh, really developed a, a passion for the industry and for the trajectory and what, you know, aviation provides to both individuals, but also to companies on the way of uh, ability to to move around and, and maximize time. I, we kind of view aviation as as a time machine. That's what it affords us. So um, yeah, my journey started with a small, privately uh, held family business, and then it took me to World Fuel Services, where I spent the last eleven years with World Fuels and, and various roles. And and my time there, sort of, it, it really in a larger company opened my eyes to the different parts of aviation, but the importance of of optionality and the importance of decarbonization. So, um, you know, where we we saw a, a tapering off of the growth in our business a little bit at World Fuel, I, I recognized that the growth would be in sustainability and off sustainability offerings. And so seized on an opportunity to to take a, a more of a leadership role in the business aviation group at World Fuel. And that's where I met um, uh, Brian Trivico, who's the, the principal of Alder Fuels. And, and I was mm-hmm. taking and leveraging some of their sustainability offerings at World Fuel, not just sustainable fuels, but offsets and wrecks and all those types of things and, and educating the, the, the marketplace with that. And that's really what sort of introduced me to more about sustainable aviation fuels and then led me to Alder. All right. Well, speaking of Alder, tell us more. What is Alder Fuels all about? Well, Alder is is about decarbonizing the, the, the tough sectors. So what what we found is that, uh, and, if, and there's plenty of, uh, obviously, uh, reading that you can do about this, but uh, most of the objectives inside decarbonization and specifically aviation are centered around sustainable aviation fuel. And obviously, as somebody who has a vested interest and a long a passion for aviation, um, the interest really led me towards uh, different technologies and different companies and different people um, that uh, were decarbonizing. And so I had a personal relationship at Alder, and the Alder story is one that I can I can relate to, which is uh, a growth story and a story of of next generation um, sustainable aviation fuels. We you know we have sustainable aviation fuels today based on fats, oils, and de- greases primarily, and Alder's about taking that next step in, in decarbonization and going from, uh, you know, scale where we, we will only have a, a certain amount of fats, oils, and greases. The technology at Alder leverages uh, b- biomass and all different forms of biomass, whether it's, you know, existing woody forest residues or energy grasses. Um, we're really looking forward to leveraging our technology across, across those platforms. So I think that's actually a good segue into a question I was going to ask in a couple, but I'll do it now. So tell us more about your technology and its development. Well, our technology is really a, a bolt-on. Um, so the, 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 one of the interesting things about Alder, one of the things that drew me to Alder was the fact that we have um, a proprietary technology that sits on top of existing proven pyrolysis technology. So what we're doing is we're really taking and bolting on a, a I'll call it a, a third step in a process where we are taking a woody biomass and densifying it, taking that and do, making an energy densification process, running it through pyrolysis, which basically takes that biomass and turns it into an, an oil. 
And then that oil has certain properties which make it difficult to handle. The primary use for it today is is really in furnaces and, and, and burning it. But um, with uh, our process, you can actually separate the the oils from the metals and the waters in it and provides a hydro-treatable product. And the key to you know the hydro-treating is that that's how most refined products are, are, are produced today. So if you get diesel fuel, jet fuel, gasoline, et cetera, that's all coming through hydro-processing of petroleum. And what we're saying is, is that, hey, we can provide you an alternate um, resource, an alternate mm-hmm. crude oil to run through your existing hydro-treating facilities. And that's sort of the, the interesting thing about Alder and the scalable thing about Alder is that as we take and we continue to produce more and more of our Alder green crude, it can simply go in and displace petroleum crude oil. Mm-hmm. So your first green crude plant is under development in the southeastern U.S. Um, can you give us any more details about that? Sure. We're, we're finalizing uh, the location uh, of our our facility. It will be a, a greenfield facility, so there there won't be any necessarily any existing uh, uh, technology or um, utilities that we're leveraging there, but we have a, an extensive survey of sites in the in the southeast. We were hoping to have an announcement uh, in this quarter. It may yet still happen, but uh, fingers crossed. But that's really where we're going to sort of do this first of its kind. Uh, it's going to be um, a big deal for us because we're going to be partnering with Inviva um, mm-hmm. and BTG Bioliquids, our, our pyrolysis technology provider. And we're going to be doing this um, all co-located in one facility. So basically creating an above ground oil well somewhere in the Southeast and then uh, mm-hmm. sending that product onward for processing. We're, we're really, really excited about it. And uh, we're moving very quickly uh, to making it a reality. Lots of engineering, lots of site evaluation, um, you know, lots of product development. So super exciting times at Alder. Yes. Very exciting. So um, you mentioned in Viva um, feedstock and sustainability are key. Um, in Viva supplying Alder with Woody Biomass. Can you tell us more about that and kind of how your interests lined up for this partnership? Sure. Well, in, you know, part of it is the fact that uh, their headquarters is co-located with ours in, in Washington, D.C. They're just out of the side of D.C. and Bethesda, Maryland. But also mm-hmm. they have a deep expertise in sourcing sustainable biomass for other portions of their business. They're one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, Woody Biomass provider for the heat and energy uh, production industries. So they are aggregating large amounts of sustainable biomass today, and they have deep expertise in demonstrating the sustainability all the way from the forest through the process. So um, in the sustainable aviation world especially, uh, it's it's paramount that we have transparency and certified, uh, uh, we can trace, excuse me, the, the woody biomass from basically from the exact location in the forest all the way through our process into a finished fuel because that that that's one of the value propositions that we have is that we need to be able to provide to our customers whether it's a it's a it's an airline or whether it's a a, a, a corporate or a private individual we need to be able to demonstrate to them in a transparent way that this is being sustainably sourced and so it's about regeneration uh, that's really what this is about, is about regeneration of carbon uh, that exists in the atmosphere today. Mm-hmm. So other than Enviva, you have backing by some big name, great, very respected companies like Honeywell, UOP, United Ventures, Afuel, Boeing, Department of Energy, NREL. What, how, how did Alder Fields do that? What do you think stood out about Alder to these companies and organizations? Well, part of it is our people. Uh, part of it is existing relationships and, and things that we've delivered on in the past. So, uh, you know, our, our founder and CEO, Brian Sherbico, has uh, deep roots in the industry um, with his first SAF project out on the West Coast and had relationships with uh, some of those companies. But also it's it's the belief in our technology and the, the fact that it's, um, it's understandable. Um, we're doing a, a fractionation process that um, is is relatively simple tech, but it's it's high value, and I think that's where they they understand that in order to be scalable, in order to employ um, technology at a rapid 
pace, it, it needs to be, uh, I'm going to say, somewhat simple. So uh, that's that's where we come in. We, we also um, align very uh, well with those companies in that uh, they are all strategic to all their and strategic to our scaling. So they benefit from the scaling just the way that that we benefit from the scaling. Mm-hmm. And, in, and in particular, um, you know, UOP, they are a, a critical piece to this Honeywell UOTP because in the hydro trading process, they provide a lot of the technology to the existing refineries where that tech happens. So if you mm-hmm. imagine if you're a, a refinery that's running today and somebody's asking you to put something new or different into your refinery, uh, you need to be uh, pretty sure that it's not going to run afoul of any of your existing processes. And so that's where we're, the process guarantee that, that UOP is going to provide really uh, lends credibility. But Boeing, um, you know, on the development side and willingness to, to test in their, their aircraft, uh, you know, Avfuel is key on our logistics and distribution side, in particular into the business aviation market. So they all play, uh, you know, critical, critical roles. Mm-hmm. Well, Darren, I have one more question for you before we'll wrap it up. Um, Alder has a goal of, quote, unleashing 1 billion gallons of SAF. It's a big number. What do you think will be most critical in terms of achieving this goal or what might this goal be, be most dependent on? Uh, I think it's flexibility in, in our biomass and also aggregation. So there's there's two things really that are sort of happening simultaneously. One is the ever-changing incentives and role of regulation. Uh, regulation has played a very, very important role as has incentives. Um, there's uh, some modifications that I think that need to happen in particular in the US where we have are extremely uh, stringent uh, and the way that we have crafted our, our, our legislation, it's sometimes, I think, counterintuitive to the, where we need to get to. So we're actively involved in helping regulators understand the impact uh, of current regulation and incentives and hoping to help direct that to expand our technology and implementation. And the other is uh, we need that on a global scale. Uh, we need consistency Uh, in regulation and incentives on on a global scale. So Mm -hmm. uh, because the way that, you know, a billion gallons happens is it has to happen in a lot of places. And in order to do that, we need sort of national standards um, or at least other states to to jump on uh, the bandwagon with their own low carbon fuel standards. So Mm -hmm. that's what we're hoping for. That's what we're pushing for. Uh, But there's enough momentum uh, currently and there's enough opportunities out there that we're chasing uh, to keep us busy for a long time. So, uh, you know, we're hoping to have more announcements, uh, in the next year or so on additional projects. Great answer. Very exciting. Um, you know, I'm at the end of my questions. Is there anything else that you wanted to add? Uh, I think the only thing that's, uh, you know, I'd like to add is that, you know, we do view ourselves as collaborators. So um, if there's folks out there that are, are, are looking to become involved or be more involved in what's happening in the industry, we are, uh, we view ourselves as a very good partner. So if there's interest of anyone, they can reach out to me uh, through LinkedIn um, or what have you, and, uh, and we can start up a discussion with the right folks at Alder. Well, very good. Um, you know what? I want to thank you so much for chatting with us today and telling uh, us more about Alder Fuels. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Anna. It's always a pleasure. I look forward to seeing you again. Definitely. And to our listeners, thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, take care. <laughs>